for you. I was too tired to stay up for my presentation. Um, you guys are amazing. I think it's kudos to the other speakers who I've really enjoyed tonight. Um, so I'm going to try to be fast paced because I appreciate all of your time and attention. So I run our customer solutions team. I work for Clean Power Finance. We're a uh, solar finance company. We just make solar more affordable for homeowners. And I'm a married mom of three. And you can't do a job like that and a job like this without a lot of great advice. And so I thought I would share some of my favorite advice that I've received over my career, uh, of which I have a top 10. So a little bit quickly about me. This is my amazing family. Um, we don't always look this old together. <laughs> this was a typical week. I tried to have some things that you might relate to. So I run uh, the product management, engineering, marketing, and support teams. And I get to do a lot of really fun stuff. So we solve really challenging problems. I work for a very new, small solar startup. There's Kleiner and Google investing. We're making really great changes. We're making solar more affordable. I'm very inspired every day. And then I get to go home to these guys at night. It makes me, though, very tired. And again, you can't do these jobs without great advice. So to share a little bit of that with you guys, first, because the energy in the room, I can just feel it. You guys are just like so energetic. Can everyone stand up? This is my turn. This is how I do a poll. You guys, instead of raising your hand, you have to overcommit. You have to stand. So who in the room feels like they have just totally got it nailed? Your work, you love your job, and also whatever you do outside of work. It's got, you've got the perfect balance. You've got it just completely figured out. Stay standing if that is true for you. Sit down if that is not true for you. <laughs> that is me, which is why I'm giving this talk, my top 10 career advice. So um, I was going to say if any one of you stood standing that you could be our next speaker. Um, OK, so here's my number 10. I'm going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. One person can make a difference. All right, so go work in this industry. Pick renewable energy. Pick solving health issues, education issues, bringing energy to the world. Nobody needs another selfie on the internet. Pick something that you can do that will make a difference and be super inspired by that and try to bring oh, just a little bit every day. And if you don't work in a company, then make a little difference every day in your kids' lives, lives of your friends, families, et cetera. Et cetera. That is my top. That's my number 10. Love the people you work with. These are pictures of people that I work with. I pick people over strategy even, because I think great people can make a crappy strategy better and kick ass. And I think bad people can make a, a great strategy really bad. So this is me having fun with all my different teams. And um, you were going to spend a lot of time with these people. So when I was you know, looking for different careers, the best advice for me, number nine, was you just have to love the people you're spending all this time with. You're not going to want to give up time with that beautiful family I was showing you. Unless you're really inspired about what you're doing, you're making a difference, and you love the people you work with. So seek out companies who you will really enjoy, your boss, your peers, the people who report to you, and find out companies who ex uh, respect your values. Right. So I have an MBA. I went to a company that respects and likes MBAs. I wanted flexibility. I went to a company with a boss who really supported me doing both. Number eight, drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> I have a sign in my office that says, behind every successful person is a lot of coffee, a substantial amount of coffee. Um, the two cups, though, are actually to represent drink coffee with a friend. And this is my way of saying what most people say in great advice talks is networking. But really, it's also about just making connections. Right? You're working really hard. You get tired, so you want some coffee. You need air. But build connections. Build connections with the people you work with. Build connections with the people on your team. Get a fan club who's excited to see you. I mean, just go out of your office. Get away from your desk. Women tend to be heads down. Um, so my advice, go out and have a coffee with a coworker or with your boss or with a friend who's going to perk you up in addition to the caffeine. Or wine. It works with wine. <laughs> OK, keep calm. Don't take it personally. And actually, by this, I really mean know when to not take it personally. Because I actually think it's a woman's strength to bring personal um, beliefs and passion into the work that she does. But there are times when we just need to let it go. And I actually think this can be a competitive advantage sometimes for men who do this well. If you're getting beat up, if they, if they don't approve your budget, or they don't approve your headcount, or you have a speed bump on the road, don't just like, oh. I mean, I've had my moments where I've just thought, God, I just don't know. It's like a crisis of confidence, and can I get up? 
I mean, really, I was talking to one of my favorite Stanford professors. He's like, just like toughen up a bit. All you women just want to be liked all the time. It's like if every man, or even frankly a tougher woman than you, knew that all they had to say was that you're a bitch and you would just back down and run away and let them like walk all over you, it's like that is so easy. It's like that's so easy. Don't let them get away with that. So don't take it personally. Learn, move on. You know, not everyone's going to absolutely adore you and that's fine. You can still be very effective. Um, okay, so that is, I can't remember what number, I think that might have been eight. Stay on your side of the net. I don't know who's heard of this. I learned this at Touchy Feely, which is a class at Stanford Business School, the one I've used the most of all my classes. This is how you give feedback. All right? You cannot be in an organization where you don't have trust. You can't have trust without being open and honest with each other, but you've got to do that in a way where people actually can hear you. Right? Staying on your side of the net works at actually companies and at home with your spouse and with your kids. You say, I feel, I feel this way when you do this, and so therefore I recommend. <clears throat> they can't argue with how you feel, and you can't tell them what they're thinking. You can't be like, you're being so bossy, you're mean, or, it's like, you know, when you use that tone, or when you walk out of the room and storm, then I feel like you're not engaged with this conversation. Um, the person has to care that you feel this way, or it won't be as effective. <laughs> I use this a lot, and it is a very effective way to be heard. If they don't care how you feel, then bring in the extra added bonus of saying, you're just, it's not as, I don't think you're being as effective as you choose to be, because this is not coming across to me. Or you're, um, you're having a cost that you're not aware of. Stay on your side of the net. This is representing know your audience, and in this case, I mean know the people that you're working with. Back to having great people that you work with, you need to understand your boss's motivations, your team's motivations, your own motivations, which is my next slide. Um, <clears throat> know where they're coming from. How do they get compensated? How do they, why, what, why do they work? Are they working for money? Do they want to get, you know, the people on your team want more money? Do they want to raise? Do they want more responsibility? We introduced, I helped introduce at my company a Myers-Briggs personality assessment. Know where people are coming and how they hear you because you will be way more effective if you understand and can target your communications to be better heard. So that feedback point is gonna go through way better if you know I am an extrovert and like six people out of eight people in my direct reports are introverts. So that is a different communication style to get through to them. So know that, and speaking of Myers-Briggs, I'm an ENFJ. And this stands with, um, this is the know yourself and be yourself which is one of my favorite top 10 advices. So for a long time, I worked at eBay. Meg Whitman is an ENTJ. Almost 80% of um, eBay tested ENTJ on the Myers-Briggs. It was like you had to be that way to succeed there. And when I left eBay, I let the F, that stands for feeling. <laughs> it's like not the hard, cold, analytical all the time. It stands for you make some judgment calls based on how you feel and how they're gonna have an impact on the world. The point here isn't about what my type is. The point is know what motivates you, and if you know what motivates your team, then you can really make connections and make a difference and be more successful. So that's why I put this one. Know yourself and be yourself. I really like to work. I know this about myself. My husband even told me at a dinner party, or he told other people in a very nice way, that I'm more interesting when I work <laughs> than when I stay at home all the time. When I stay at home, I talk about like, oh, the school auction and the fundraiser and oh my god, cool school, you know, car line and, and he's like, you know, it's a little more interesting when you're talking about buying a company or the next thing that you're launching or something like that. So I know that I like to work, but I really know that I love being home with my kids. And so I needed to be really clear on that when I went in and started each job to say, here's what I can do for you, but I have to also have time for my family. So know yourself and be yourself and don't fake that. And speaking of knowing yourself and knowing the people that you work with and what they're motivated by and what's important to you, don't be afraid to ask for what you want, people. I mean, um, this is a Madonna quote, which is so funny. But um, <clears throat> I had a career coach at eBay. And I was really struggling at the time. I had a much bigger job. And I had always worked flexibly since I had kids. Uh, I was one of the first, actually the first ever um, woman at eBay to work a flex 80% schedule. 
And they were like 10,000 people when I started there. It was not like groundbreaking. It was, I mean, it was groundbreaking, but they were big. And my coach said to me, well, why don't you just ask? I was like, oh, well, I don't know what they're going to say. If I want to say I want to work hard, I want one day from home, and are they going to think I'm not committed to my career? And she's like, well, how are you going to ask? I mean, are you going to ask like a total loser, or are you going to show them that you can totally do this? So how you ask is important, right? I came in and I demonstrated, my, I talked about what was important to my boss because I knew what was, he was motivated by, back to that point two points ago. I knew what he was motivated by, I knew what was important to me, I knew my contribution to the company, and I thought, here's what's important to you, here's what's important to me, here's how I'm going to prove it to you, and so therefore, I would like to do this thing. And we can just test it out, and I will prove that I can do this to you. And he said, sure. So ask. If you want flexibility at work, if you want more money, uh, if you want a different a career, better responsibility, a new job, to not work anymore for a while, don't be afraid to ask. All right, this is number two. So I'm on two more. Top two. This one's from my dad. I think Jack Welch also said it, which is, life is a marathon, not a sprint. I work for a CEO boss who signs every email, keep running. It's a very intense pace place. A lot of my engineers get really pissed when he sends them emails saying that because they're like, ah, oh, he just wants all this stuff. I'm like, no, it means like, take, pace yourself. You're going to have different careers. It's a career, you know, jungle gym, not ladder straight up, right? You're going to do well some days, and you're going to have a ton of energy, and other days you're just going to be like, ooh, crawl under bed. So pace yourself, get a fan club, give energy back through naps, wine, exercise. I can't believe how many people raised their hands with exercise today. That was really impressive. Um, and just don't burn out. I mean, if your company goes out of business tomorrow, are you going to be happy about the other things that you've been able to commit your time and energy to so that you can move on to the next thing? Those kids at the beginning give me a lot of that perspective. And the last number one closing best advice I ever got was from my mom, which is you can do more than you think. I do a lot of mentoring of a lot of women, and many of them who have taken a break and get really busy. You get really busy very quickly when you're not working. And there's like, there's no way, how do I fit it in? Like, I just can't imagine doing all this stuff. You can do way more than you think. Women are amazing multitaskers. I have a very big job. I manage about almost half the company, about a third of the company. We're 140 people, so it's not that crazy. But um, I do that. I have three children. I have an amazing nanny, an amazing husband. But I also ran our school auction last year, and I did a couple other things. Like, you can fit this in. You can manage through coffee, energy, finding. Uh, sources of energy for you to do a lot. You can also choose to not do any of that and just be a great whatever you want to be. So just recall, whatever path you pick, you can do more than you think. It's not going to be easy, but I will tell you it is worth it. And that is my message of top 10 advice for you guys tonight. Thank you for hanging in.